the National Redress Scheme and our work with, with redress and people who've experienced child sexual abuse in institutions. So maybe we'll just kick off with that and say, what is the National Redress Scheme? What are my options around some sort of acknowledgement of what happened to me? Why should I choose redress? Okay, so the, so the redress scheme has been designed to assist you to get acknowledgement of what happened to you as a child. Um, there's three ways that it's designed to acknowledge what happened to you. One is to acknowledge you from a financial position. One is to acknowledge you from a direct personal response from the institution in which you received the harm, where they, um, and, that, and that can be in an apology, it can be in uh, a written form or sitting down talking to, the, to a representative of the institution. And the other one is in receiving some counselling, some ongoing counselling to help assist in your recovery. So those are the three ways that um, you can be acknowledged for what happened to you traditionally. Um, and that's what the redress scheme is offering. Yeah. In, in order to get that, there is a, a, an application, what they call an application process where um, you're supported through a redress support service to, to write down what happened um, to you um, enough so that it can tell your story and then that goes into the scheme and the scheme then talks with the institution and then they have an independent decision maker who looks at what happened and then they come back to you to with an offer about um, giving you compensation around that. Mm. Yeah. And what if I don't choose to go through redress? What are my other options and how do I find out about them? Yeah, so there is an a, 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 a lawyer's organisation called No More and we get you in touch with No More or, or uh, uh, the, and you can talk to them about civil. So there's two options, there's civil or there's redress. Um, if you, and they will talk to you about those two options. Um, and what you can make a decision then whether or not you want to go through the civil option or whether you want to continue with redress and no more will discuss that with you. Uh, so, Hilke, by the civil option, could you just explain what that is? Please? Yeah, so civil litigation would be, you know, the court process where you're really taking that institution to court for the harm that you have suffered, um, you know, while they were responsible for your care. Um, but it's important to know that, that is a, there is a different burden of evidence when you're going that path. But there's also, if you're successful, you know, for example, a considerably larger um, sum of money that might be paid out. Now, this is something that no more can really explain to you in detail there you know we're not lawyers they are um but you know so so i guess you know when if you're going the civil litigation pathway it is a harder process it is more evidence-based um so they are going to look at that of course that's often quite hard in in cases of child sexual abuse but it is possible um you know sometimes groups of survivors might um go go together as a group um, yeah, so I guess to differentiate that from redress in terms of the burden of evidence, the, the redress assessment that's being done is more looking at what is the likely, is this likely to have happened rather than wanting to have co more concrete evidence. I hope I'm putting that rightly again, I'm not a lawyer, um, but that would be the main difference. And it is important for survivors to know that once they do accept an offer for redress, that they will then not be able to go the civil litigation as well after that. So it's an important decision and should be well um, considered and, and we do recommend people speak to know more around that decision. So Arlene, I've decided to go through the redress application process. Uh -huh. How do I know if I qualify? Um, well, it's dependent on whether or not the institution where the abuse happened um, has signed up to the scheme to the National Redress Scheme. Um, so one of the first things that you could do um, is you could contact Blue Knot um, and speak with one of our team members um, and inform the councillor of the name 
of the institution um, where the harm happened. Um, and from that point, um, the counsellor would then uh, look on the website, the National Redress Scheme website, um, where, it, where there is a list of the institutions that have signed up to the scheme. And if that institution has signed up, um, then you are eligible. Um, if it's not, um, if it hasn't signed up as of yet, you do have a couple of options. I suppose one is that you can continue with an application um, and the application will be placed on hold um, in the event that the institution does sign up. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a legal mandate for the institution to sign up. Um, however, you may have seen in the news or read in the newspapers um, that um, there's a lot of advocacy that's happening at a ministerial level to really encourage um, institutions to sign up to the National Redress Scheme. Um, again, um, as you can previously mentioned, if the institution hasn't um, and you don't want to, to wait, um, again, you can go down the path of uh, civil litigation as well. Mm. And you have to be under 18 at, when the yeah. abuse happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, Tony, um, I started filling in an application with another service mm -hmm. and it was just too hard. Mm -hmm. I couldn't cope with it. How can you support me in a way that will enable me to go through the process? Because I do want to have my abuse acknowledged mm -hmm. and I do feel that I deserve redress, mm -hmm. but it's just too distressing. So I'm... Um I mean, we would find out what it was that you, was, you were finding distressing about doing the application. Um, the ways that we can support you just generally is that we allocate an individual counsellor to you so that you work with that one person over the application process. Um, we can, there's many ways we can do it, but one way we do it is that as you speak with that person each week or each fortnight, depending on how you want to do it, they will write down everything you're saying. So they'll take the notes um, and at the end of the time, we'll, we'll, write it to, we'll write it down for you and then we'll read it back to you or email it back to you so that you can read what we've written to see if that were accurate. Mm -hmm. And then if that's what, is what you want to put forward, then we'll put the application in together. So it's something that you and I do together or you and the counsellor would do together. Mm -hmm. And we'll take as long as you need to take. So if we need to take six months to write this, we'll take six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, during the time that we're together, we'll be, we'll be doing some time each session writing the application. And sometimes we'll just be talking together about safety, about you, about what you need to be okay in your life as you go through each day while we're doing this. We know this is hard. Um, sometimes you, we, you might also find it useful to have a face-to-face -face counsellor and we'll, we'll certainly work with you to help put you in together with a, with a good trauma-informed counsellor. Yeah. So there's many ways that we can work together to make this a much easier um, process with a traumatic because we, we do get that. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think also on top of that too, um, we really acknowledge um, how distressing it can be to contact the National Redress Scheme um, mm -hmm. continually to try and find out where your application's up to, has a decision been made, uh, what's happening with it. Um, so we will do that either for you um, if we become your nominee um, or with you. Uh, so again, we're looking at different ways in which to try and reduce the different points of distress because we know that the application process, the, the process of waiting is very distressing. It can be very distressing for people um, to, to, to experience and to go through. And we also know that the wait time on an outcome can be incredibly lengthy as well, which in itself can, can, can create distress. 
um, especially if you're not hearing any information around what's happening. Um, so again, you would be speaking to a counsellor throughout that, that, that time as well um, to really have one point of contact throughout this process. In fact, we meet every fortnight with the National Redress Scheme to find out what's happening with your application once it's been lodged. Mm. So really, really aware of what it's like and working with you the best way that you would like us to support you. How much money will I get? That we can't answer. <laughs> so there, there, there is a taxonomy um, and we're happy to talk to you through that. The maximum payment that anybody can receive is 150000 mm. Yeah, Which is never enough. You know, and I think that's important to note that it's, it's never enough. Yeah. Um, and that was set by the scheme. Yeah. yeah. And, and how long does the application process take? So obviously that depends on me. Yes. But the actual, once I've put the application form in, how long would it take to get an outcome? Unfortunately, that is taking a while at the moment. So we've had some scenarios where it's taken up to 14 months once the application's gone in. Um, but as the scheme's getting more mature, it, that's, that is starting to decrease. So we have had some people, you know, who've been a little less than 12 months. But at the moment, I, the average has been around 12 to 14 months but it is decreasing but but realistically I think we have to sit with that at the moment mm. yeah and if I don't want to have a direct personal response I don't ever want to meet that institution again do I have to do that absolutely not you do not have to do that mm. yeah. that is your choice mm. yeah and the same goes for counseling some people are mm. keen on counseling others feel they mm. do not want that and so that's absolutely your choice on what you would like to receive and what you don't. So choice around that is, is yours. So it's really important to, to know that you can choose yes or no to that. And you may, some people do say, look, they, they kind of say, I'm going to tick the yes box, but you've got 10 years or eight, I think there's eight years left now. Um, and you may choose never to take it up or you may find in six years time, yeah, you know, I, I do actually want that apology. I'm going to go for it. So there's a choice there again. Nothing needs to be done right now. Mm. Yeah. And Arlene, you mentioned nominee. What Can you tell me what, what that means? Yeah. So the nominee is the, um, the nominee for the redress uh, form. Um, so... If, again, it's, it's your choice and we would fully inform you um, at the beginning of when, if you decide to initially engage with Blue Knot, we would send you a welcome pack uh, with a lot of information. We would also talk to you on the phone um, about what the information is so that you're, again, fully informed around the process and, 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 and also what the expectations are for what we can provide. Um, and the nominee um, is, is basically a kind of um, a liaison or an in-between person. Um, we are between the address scheme and, um, and yourself and the client. Um, and, and really one of our roles is to pass information. So be the flow through of information between yourself and the scheme and the scheme and yourself. Um, it's also to, um, to ask for updates um, which kind of Tony spoke about earlier, um, around your application. Um, sometimes um, the redress scheme requires additional information around your application. Um, so additional detail, for instance, or dates. Um, and again, we would collect that um, initial information uh, from you and, and pass that on to the scheme. Um, again, with your consent. Um, also, if you were to, um, I suppose, meet the requirements for a priority application, which means that theoretically uh, it gets processed quicker, um, we would also be able to advocate uh, for you, um, communicate to the scheme as to, as to why um, your application's priority status. So we would also be able to assist you in terms of the outcome. We would be able to, if you, again, if you chose to, we would be able to uh, be in on the call when you hear the outcome of your application as well. 
because we, you know, really acknowledge that it can be quite terrifying to be in in that call. Um, you can be sitting with questions of not being believed, will they believe me, what will the outcome be? And so again, we can support you through that process as well. Um, that's what a nominee is. Thank you. Mm. And in your experience, once someone receives uh, an outcome, does it bring closure? It's dependent. It's dependent on the individual. For some people, um, for some people, the process is not necessarily about the financial settlement. Um, in fact, you know, many of the people that we've supported through that process, um, that's in a way the least important. Um, what is is the uh, the direct personal response? So the apology and the acknowledgement of what happened to the person. Um, for some, it's the first time they've ever been able to speak to the institution or represent a representative from the institution about you know what happened to them, and, and but also really importantly as well as the impact. You know what what was the impact of that abuse that happened to you as a child? Um, and we know that for many it's long lasting, uh, still continuing. Um, so for some, that's the most important, where they're able to actually look someone in the eye and say, you did this to me, and this, this was the impact of that. Um, and for some, that brings a sense of closure, but, but not necessarily for everyone. In fact, the people that we've been working with have found the way that we were, we're supporting them has actually been a healing process. Yeah. So they've actually found the way that we've listened and by being, being able to give back their story in such a collaborative way that they've felt so heard and so held that that's actually helped them yeah. heal yeah. and get some closure because yeah. that, it's given them something back like that 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 responsive narrative has given them something back yeah and it sounds like your process also involves some counseling support along the way as well so yeah yeah so presumably that's also therapeutic and part of the process yeah yeah, yeah. So it is kind of being aware of the complexity of redress, which as Arlene was saying, it is unfortunately touching trauma and getting people to talk about it. Sometimes for the very first time, like we've had um, a lot of men say, this is the first time I've told anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But once again, it's being believed. Absolutely. It's being listened to. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and it's it, yeah, it's why I think we spend so much time in the beginning of the process to really build a relationship as well with the person to really understand them, um, to really talk a lot about safety. Um, also, not necessarily just safety with Blue Knot, but safety with other supports, so other localized supports that you may have in your community as well, um, if if that's available. Um, and it's also why. We don't necessarily jump straight into the application process or the application writing because safe, safety is the most important um, aspect um, of this. And do you do this over the phone? Yeah, uh, over the phone or sometimes by Zoom or video or even Skype. Yeah, yeah whatever works for the person. Mm, so it's all about choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say about about reading and the whole process? I know it's really important, rewarding, and also challenging work. But obviously, you know, just great to walk alongside someone and support them through a process and, and, and see see them through to an outcome. I know. Yeah, and I think it it is an opportunity for that. It does give some people who get the uh, financial outcome an opportunity to set up for future as well, whereas potentially a lot of people are struggling financially and it kind of just gives that little boost. Um, and there's financial counselling available for people and uh, it's protected money so as well. So it, it's so we also get people, if they want to, to talk to know more. Um, they've got some financial counsellors and 
it does give that little setup for people as well. So it's there's a lot of hope here um, for people as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I suppose that's a, that, that's very important because you know some people do receive a substantial sum of money, and you know being able to use that wisely and find out wisely for you find out what it is that you want to use it for yeah. and uh, and think that through and make sense of that is really mm-hmm. important so great to know that there's financial counseling support as well absolutely yeah so look thank you all for uh, your time today that's been simply incredible and i know that you know people tuning in they're going to find your insights absolutely invaluable and uh, um, Arlene, we're just going to check your memory with the phone number. Would you like to just? <laughs> no idea. Um, both, when, yep, so yep. Both, both the helpline and the redress support service. Well, interestingly, it's the same number. So that's something importantly for you to know, Cathy. Um, but the, uh, the number is uh, for both um, is 1300 657 um, so yeah, so as I said, we're open nine until five um, Eastern Standard Time. We're a national service, as is Redress as well, um, and we're obviously open on the weekends as well. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you all for your time. <laughs>